Our next speaker has spent about the, next, the last five years with his own consulting business called Elixir Consulting. He consults on general business. He does a lot of social work innovatively. He's an inspiring leader and very, very importantly, he is a good listener. So if anyone has an idea, a business idea that you want to share with, during the breaks, make sure you catch him. But who is he and what is his name? His name is Hani Koja and he believes in sharing ideas. His vision for the next year is to create every year 1,000 jobs in Saudi Arabia, one NGO every year, and make one business leader every single year in this country. Can anyone please invite Mr. Hani Koja? أهلاً وسهلاً أستاذ هاني طبعاً أستاذ هاني خلينا نسمحوا لي كمان أضيف بالعربي هو محب للشباب ومؤكد أنه كل عمل في إبداع لازم يكون بروح شبابية احتواءه للشباب دائماً وأعتقد في كثير منا نتعاون وتعامل معاه أكثر خلينا نسمع منه ونعرف كيف الإبداع المجتمعي أو استغلال القضايا المجتمعية وغيره وخلق الإبداع داخلها للاستفادة منها وتفعيلها وتطوير الشركات وأيضاً تحقيق مسؤولية اجتماعية Shukran, shukran. alaykum wa rahmatullah. Sameen, can you hear me? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, salatu salam ala sallam al-Saleem. I'm going to share with you the model that I use for innovation. Okay, it might not be the right model, but it's the one that I use. Okay, before I do that, I want to ask you, what is the difference between innovation and invention? Is there a difference? What's, what's invention? Uh, invention is a new product, innovation is a, an idea. Okay, so before, you know, not taking too long, actually it's the reverse in my opinion. Invention is when you create something, okay? Innovation is when you make sure that people use it, okay? So innovation is, for example, the iPhone. People are using it, the touchpad. A lot of the innovation that happens that become in the market and people are using on their day-to-day Life, that's innovation, and that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Now, there needs to be an overlap between four major elements, and I'm gonna take you through it one by one. The first one is the vision. The second one is support. The third one is values. And the fourth one is operations. Usually people do one or two. Usually people start at operations. Usually people don't have common values that they follow. Uh, very few people have a certain vision of what they want to do, so let's take it one by one. Okay. Now a vision. The first thing you have to do is to pick an idea based on a compass that you have for yourself. What is the filter that you're going to use for picking an idea that you're going to innovate? My compass is uh, Allah and His Prophet Anything that does not, would not, not make me proud to say it in front of them, I will not pursue. There's too many ideas in the world that you pick something that they will not, that you will not be proud of to share. Um, it's not really worth it for me. The second thing is you need to decide who are you going to help? Who is the target that you're going to help? Because innovation is all about solving problems. So what problem are you going to solve for who? And try to narrow that target as much as possible. Understand that person as much as possible so that you know what the problem they're facing and you go to the next part which is what is the idea you're going to offer them to solve a major problem in their life and make sure that that, that solution is unique don't go and pick a solution that almost everybody is offering or somebody can offer tomorrow maybe it's unique today but within a year half a year you do a brust you know a restaurant you're selling chicken you think it's innovative then within two three years you find six thousand chicken shops next to you, that's not innovation. To also have a torture test, make sure you can do the elevator test. The elevator test is if you walk into an elevator and your customer comes in and walks in at the same time, what can you say to this person to solve their problem? You just split it into two parts, really. Uh, excuse me, I understand that you have a major problem and your major problem is, and the second part is, I think I can help you I have a solution that can solve this problem. And you state it. If you cannot say that, 
in a minute, by the time you go from the ground floor to the fifth floor, then you haven't clarified it in your head. Work on it even more. And then verify it before you start spending effort to innovate, to experiment, to spend money, to spend effort, spend time. Talk to people. Talk to your customer. Make sure that this solution, first of all, make sure that you understand the problem fully, and then make sure that this solution is really solving their problem. So that's the first step, the vision. Now these are some ways that you can decide what your vision is. You have to capture one of these uh, words. I offer the easiest solution. I offer the biggest solution. The cheapest. The healthiest. The latest. The fastest. The strongest. The longest lasting. Tastiest. The widest selection. The freshest and the wisest. Pick one, pick two, but pick one of them. The next element is support. You need to get support for your idea. You need to support for your own efforts because you're going to go into a new area that's going to require a lot of effort, a lot of uh, cor courage. This is my support system. It's a lot of people, okay? Family, friends, businessmen, government officials, uh, people that you serve, companies that you work at or you own, you have to have a complete support system that's going to help you achieve your innovation. Now, if you don't have a support system, let's say you're asking yourself, I don't have a support system. Then you have to put in your plan getting that support system. You have to ask yourself, this idea will succeed, will not succeed unless I have the support of one or two people or one or two companies, one or two officials. How do I get their support? It is worthless to start this idea without getting that support. So put it part of your business plan or put it part of your product development plan. I'd like to take this opportunity while I'm here. I'd like to ask my family to stand up. Okay, my mother and my father, my wife, my kids. My kids, stand up. I'd like to say thank you for supporting me. Values. You have to have values when you're pursuing your innovation. The values that I try to stick to. Now, values are things you stick to no matter what happens to your project. If your project is succeeding, your values stay the same. If your project is failing, your values stay the same. You have to have courage. If you talk to somebody and they have an innovative idea, but they don't have the courage to take it, they will not succeed. If they do half one foot here and one foot here, they have not taken the courage to pursue the idea. Number two is passion. Just like the girl who's eating the ice cream. It's passion. You have to be passionate about your idea. If it's, it's interesting to you, it's a nice to have, it makes money but I'm not really excited about getting up in the morning, then you don't have passion, probably you won't succeed. Number three is perseverance. You will not succeed overnight. You will fail. You will fail again. You will be tired. People will discourage you. But you have to have perseverance. If you don't have perseverance, don't bother. You have to have patience. You have to be patient. Some ideas do not take uh, overnight to happen. Sometimes you're ahead of the market. You have to wait for the market to come to you. Make your idea, open up your store, maybe two or three customers per day will come, but eventually people will come to you. Be patient. And then be humble. Always remember that your success has something to do with your efforts and your idea, but if you don't have tawfiq from Allah, then you wouldn't have succeeded. So do not ever think that when you succeed, that it is all your efforts. And if you fail, it is not because of your efforts. Be humble. Lastly, be flexible. You have a business plan, you have an innovation, you think it's going to work. If you are in the market and you feel that it's changing, the consumer is not exactly what you thought it is, be flexible. Move to the, to the uh, opportunity. Lastly is operations. A lot of people jump straight into operations. I have an idea. I'm going to open up a mobile phone shop. Let's go to operations. I need cash. I need some workers. I need a location. That's really, really the last step. But there are certain things done. 
Okay. Certain things that you have in terms of operations, make sure the plan is sustainable. Make sure cash, you always have cash in the bank. Do not spend more than you have to cover you for the next six months. And then measure results as you go. Make sure that you're on track. Okay? That's it. When those four elements overlap, you will have innovation. The more they overlap, the more innovative and more successful you'll become. Shukran. Salaam alaikum. I was about to pay you off. <laughs>